If you're like me, you might have a few Pi Zeros lying around. They're cheap and powerful, but a pain to program directly. By the way, I keep on getting asked where I get my Pi Zeros, so head on over to whereismypizero.com, it'll tell you exactly which nearby retailers stock it. To program a Pi Zero directly, you'd usually need a mini HDMI to HDMI adapter, a micro USB to USB adapter, Oh, and a USB hub if you want to use a mouse as well as a keyboard, and then of course your micro USB to USB cable for power. Not only will this make your Pi bulky, but also double the cost. Kind of reminds me of a certain laptop. So here I'm going to show you how to reduce the size of this whole thing down to just this. Something you'll be able to directly SSH into on the host computer. In this case, we're effectively turning the Pi into a USB to Ethernet adapter. So let's go do that right after these words. Malduino is an open source, Arduino based bad USB. You can use it to inject keystrokes at lightning speed, gain a shell, change someone's desktop wallpaper, anything you can do with a keyboard and 15 minutes of your time, Malduino can do in a matter of seconds. To find out more, see the Indiegogo link in the description. So firstly, you're going to want to download the latest copy of Raspbian and flash it onto a micro SD card. Simple stuff. So after that's all done, you're going to want to go ahead and open up the boot partition and find a file called config.txt. So open that up with whatever you like and scroll right to the bottom and on the bottom line, we'll just add a few lines and then paste in this. I'll leave these things in the description so you don't have to type them out. Uh, so you just want to paste that somewhere in the bottom and save. So then just close that out and then we want to open up commands line.txt, edit with notepad plus plus and it's all in one line here. You just want to go along until you find root weight here. So now we've got to paste something else in there. So if we just make sure we get the formatting right to leave one space on either side of what we're pasting in and just paste that in there, save and close that out. And lastly, we're going to need to create an empty file called SSH on the boots partition uh, with no extensions, no anything, no contents. So we can go ahead and, well, I'm gonna use Notepad++, so I'll open that up and go ahead and create a new file and then without typing anything in just go to save as make sure it's in the boots partition uh, file name has to be ssh and as for the save type just select all types you want to make sure there's no extension here whatsoever and just save that so now if we go and check there you'll see that it's been created now we're pretty much done so go ahead and eject the micro sd card and plug it into your Pi. Now, as for the micro USB cable, make sure to put it in the, um, the right hole. That's the second one down from the top because the top one doesn't actually have data lines, it's just for power. After you've plugged it in, the Pi will take a couple of minutes to set up because it's its first boot. So after that, let's continue. So to check that the Pi is properly accessible from the computer, we can go ahead and open up a command prompt and just try ping it. So the address of the Pi is going to be raspberrypi.local. That's just um, the default. So if we go ahead and try and do that, fingers crossed. And there we go, we're getting our replies. So now we can go ahead and directly connect to it. So now let's just SSH into it, just like normal, raspberrypi.local. And we should, if everything works correctly. Oh, there it is, I'll just drag it over. Okay, so the default uh, login would be pi and password raspberry. So you're gonna want to change that, of course. However, there is um, something else we need to set up. So if you were to try and ping something on the internet, you would find that the network is unreachable because as it stands, the Pi doesn't have access to the internet. And that's something which, depending on your project, you may want to fix. So let's go do that. So in order to get that internet working, you're gonna to want to right click on your uh, networking icon thing, open network and sharing center, and click change adapter settings. Okay, so here you're gonna have a few options. So let's ignore these two because these don't have, any, have anything to do with what we're doing here. So here, Ethernet, that's my main internet connection and Ethernet 5 is the Raspberry Pi. Now, as I understand, um, your Raspberry Pi should be called Ethernet 5 as well. However, if it isn't, you just look for something underneath here that says USB Ethernet RNDIS gadget. Okay, so we've got, we're going to want to right click on our main internet connection me that's ethernet and go to properties and then go over to sharing 
and then check allow other network users to connect through this computer's internet connection. And where it says select, you're going to want to select your Raspberry Pi, which for me is Ethernet 5. Press OK. And that'll take a second to do its thing. And we should be able to just close that out and go back to our Pi. So let's just reboot the Pi. So I've waited a minute or so, and let's restart the session. And there we go. So Pi and Raspberry. So now, hopefully, if we try and ping something on the internet, we get a response. So what, what this is doing is that the Pi is just using our Ethernet connection uh, to access the internet. So that's pretty much it. It's a nice, simple trick that I'm probably going to be using in every single Pi Zero project that I do from now, just because it will make my life so much easier. Um, so yeah, thanks for watching, guys. Uh, if you have any questions, be sure to leave them in the comment section down below. Remember to like the video if you liked it. Um, subscribe, follow me on Twitter. I'm at Satonic. If you have any more in-depth uh, questions about this video or any of my other videos, check out my subreddit. The link will be in the description for that. If you want to chat, uh, join the Discord. That's linked below. Um, so yeah, I think we're done. Um, stay tuned for more hacking videos.